Shalom Chavrin, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, guys, we do have some very disturbing news that has been coming out that came out this morning for us uh, about the federal aviation in the United States has uh, issued pretty much a no-fly zone or an avoidance zone over a certain area there over Montana. The, the longitude and the latitude markings here is for October 15th, which is Saturday today. Uh, they were saying from 1,500 to 2,300 hours, close to 2,400 hours uh, in the uh, time frame of, of the Montana area today that they're not to be in this area. It says to provide a safe environment for Rocket Launch Act. Uh, space operations is what it says is the type of the operation that will be going on there. Uh, again, that will be from 3 p.m. Uh, local um, time uh, to about... Um, well, looking like it's all the way to midnight that time. Um, very concerning. Uh, the, the pilots may con contact uh, Salt Lake City, uh, ARTCC, about this uh, operation that is going on. Uh, there have been several articles brought out already online about this, stating that there are no, uh, there are no space uh, rockets in this area. In fact, this area here, it's in... It's, uh, North of Dillon, uh, Dillon, Montana, that is the area that they're saying not to be flying in uh, on the map here. Uh, but there is only nuclear silos in this area. So it's very concerning about this. Uh, one thing that was kind of interesting, let me just share with you here on, uh, on uh, Twitter here. Uh, this right here, and let's see if this is the one that I actually did here. I think it is. Watch what happens. Uh, the videos... Uh, there, there was video loaded about this. Breaking news, FAA warns pilots no flying parts of, uh, of Montana. Uh, the only rockets in Montana are nuclear missiles. Well, this video has already been moved to private. Don't know why. Um, you know, I, I, you know I, I'm just not sure about what's going on with that. This is Federal Aviation Administration. Now, I did notice at the bottom it says depicted the TFR data may not be complete listing. Pilots should... Now use information on this website for flight planning purposes, service station, uh, at, and it gives you the phone number where they can actually call, a telephone number, 801-320-2560. Um, uh, anyway, that's for the point of contact for the article here. So I'm not really sure, not sure of what's going on on this. I know before it's news, they have done an article on this, or excuse me, actually News Preppers uh, has done an article on this. Uh, it says FAA warns pilots no flying over parts of Montana on Saturday. Rocket launches. The only rockets in Montana are nuclear missiles. Uh, they noted in their article here, showing a picture of one, said the Federal Aviation Administration has issued a notice to airmen restricting aircraft from certain areas uh, on, of Montana on Saturday due to rocket launch activity. And, of course, they post the same um, the, the same. Uh, Thing that we have up on our own site here as a result of this. So I'll look into this a little bit more today, see if I can find out something else about this uh, that we might be able to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on what's going on on that. Also another article on news preppers, and I did uh, double check this to see if it was so. It is so. Diego Garcia uh, is so loaded with planes that they're parking them on the roads. This is something that they put out. I saw this also October 15th says, Russian television has told its citizens a nuclear war may be imminent, which we're already aware of that. Uh, but they go on down, and um, they actually quote a man that is there. It says, massive U.S. forces moved to Diego Garcia, according to information from a government contractor. It says, the U.S. has deployed more planes than I have ever seen in nine years to the military base in Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean. Specifically, this contractor wrote, uh, wrote to say, uh, I rotate through Diego Garcia every six weeks to pull maintenance on uplink equipment as a private contractor. Something big is going on. The island has more aircraft than any time in the last nine years. They have blocked off some access roads and are now parking aircraft on the national road barriers. Have been set up around the aircraft areas. Temporary Barracks and hangars are popping up everywhere. A tent city full of AF and Navy maintenance personnel has been set up. I have never seen B-1s and B-2s 
there at the same time. Actually, I've never seen more than one there at a time. Now there are very many. Security is nuts. I had to show my ID at least eight times a day. My co-workers are, are former AF uh, and said they are like that when nukes are around. We counted over a dozen air refueling tankers on the ground. The airfield had a, a takeoff and landing every one minute very busy when we flew out we waited in line for quite a while we never had to wait in the past the navy had the docks full of ships and six to eight more moored just offshore that means they're kind of anchored off offshore um, uh, for those that don't know what moored means we watched many pallets of bombs being offloaded from one ship there were a bunch of b-52s coming in that were painted flat black i haven't seen that before um, he goes on to say, so this is very concerning indeed. This, this kind of lets us know that the United States uh, is preparing not just for some kind of little issue there, they're preparing for something majorly big. Um, I also had, uh, forgot to bring it up there, but I, I looked this up in Twitter and uh, seen another guy reacting the same. Why do we have so many planes, so many bombers in Diego Garcia? Uh, so again, we, we're going to try to get more uh, information about this. I'll share the links of these articles in there for you. But as those of you know, there's a lot of different articles. This is only just a little bit. U.S. and Russia will go to war unless proxy Syria co conflict resolved. Turkey warns. Uh, this is from Turkey saying this will happen. The Cold War superpowers broke off bilateral talks on Syria following the bombing of a U.N. aid convoy near Aleppo last month, which the U.S. said amounted to a war crime. Well, uh, according to President Putin, as we shared on the news the other day, he said the United States knows good and well that it was done by their, their backed rebels. They're the ones that attacked the aid convoy. They had swore they would do it. Uh, he had brought this up to them, and yet, even though they know it, he said they still ignore these facts that this was actually done by their their backed rebels that swore they would attack the aid convoy there. Anyway, Turkish Deputy Prime Minister uh, Nunan uh, Kurtulamas has warned that the proxy wars in the Middle East between the U.S. and Russia could signal the reemergence of a worldwide conflict between the two Cold War, war superpowers. The complex five-and-a-half-year Syrian civil war is on the brink of becoming a wider regional war, he said in an interview with the state-run Adulu News Agency on Wednesday. So very serious, uh, in fact. In fact, we, uh, it was nearly 24 hours before the State Department finally posted... Uh, Another briefing uh, today that uh, we actually watched is actually posted 13 hours ago, but they went nearly 24 hours before doing this. One thing that I noticed is that RT's representative was not there. I thought that was kind of interesting. I've never seen her ever miss a U.S. State Department briefing before, but in this case here, she was not there, which kind of makes me wonder about where Russia has already asked for their people to come home and the secret leak document on that. That was something that was supposed to not get out from what we understand. Uh, and also, uh, another thing here, Russia warns it will shoot down alliance jets over Syria if U.S. launches airstrikes against Assad. Uh, from what I understand, uh, it's been said that President Putin has actually contacted Prime Minister Netanyahu as well and has warned Netanyahu not to get involved in this conflict if the U.S. coalition goes ahead with it. He has told him that it would mean that they would bring down their planes if Israel enters into the Syrian conflict. Uh, I think that's some pretty strong words, and I'm sure many that would think of the Gog and Magog uh, of Ezekiel 38, that would give more credence to Russia possibly being Gog. I still think that Obama is Gog in this case here. And, uh, and you have to remember, when Gog, when the, when the attack comes there in the Middle East, it's all the countries around Israel. This is only setting the stage. Remember, as we brought in the broadcast yesterday, what the Obama administration wants to do is replace Assad with a very ruthless, uh, strictly Arabic state-only power so that when the... Uh, when they're ready to launch an attack on Israel, they will be able to do so without interference. Uh, because as it is, uh, President Bashar al-Assad, he's too much of, uh, of more of a supporter of the Christian people, the Eastern Orthodox community there, 
uh, and therefore it would be unlikely that he'd be willing to go along with an attack that would try to wipe out the Jewish people in Israel. Uh, so even though Obama appears to be setting the stage that uh, he is a defender of Israel, I still question his motives uh, in all of this uh, completely at all. Anyway, continuing on, uh, to kind of back up this part about Diego Garcia, this was, of course, back in March uh, of 2016. Air Force deploys the B-2 bombers to Diego Garcia. According to this article here, there was only a few of those that were sent there. But uh, if anything is truthful in this news preppers uh, site here, there is a lot more that have been sent there since then. Uh, so uh, not just B B2s, but B1s and a lot of other warplanes that are there and just tons and tons of bombs are being brought in. Uh, it is believed that this is being staged there uh, for a possible, possible confrontation with China as well, not just Russia, but with China in some of the article that I've actually seen there. So uh, going on as well, we know already too that the Kremlin, Russia is facing an unprecedented cyber threat from the U.S. Uh, that's a very concerning new uh, revelation there, but of course we know that Russia is being blamed for pretty much everything that happens. You know, if the toast gets burnt, you know, the Russians did it. You know, if your kid falls off the bicycle, the Russians did it. Uh, anything about Hillary's emails, well, the Russians did it only to find out that even the hackers are saying we're not Russians. Uh, that's kind of interesting, a little brief I caught on that, the saying that they're actually not Russians. They may be Europeans, they could be Scandinavians, they could be anything, they could be Canadians, they might even be Americans. And one, one uh, expert actually said that when it came to Colin Powell's email hacks, it appeared to be more uh, the work of, in, of an inside job. Uh, and this may all be to be able to justify going to war with Russia. Uh, but uh, anyway, it says U.S. aggressiveness is growing and threats to carry out a cyber attack against Russia are unprecedented. Presidential spokesman Dmitry Peskov uh, has said, adding that Russia will take precautionary measures. The fact is the U.S. unprecedented and aggression keeps growing and such threats against Moscow and our country's leadership are unprecedented because the threat is being announced at the level of the U.S. Vice President, Peskov told RIA Novosti. Uh, so it is serious. And on top of that, something we'll cover a little bit later today, the Ukrainian conflict is really heating up. Uh, just before turning into bed at 2 a.m. this morning, I'd already seen another news clip that the, uh, that the Ukraine government, Kiev, is sending huge convoys of uh, weapons, including grad launchers, to the contact line of the of Donetsk region and all along the eastern front there. So... It seems that the United States is very much in a, uh, not a defensive mode, but a preemptive strike mode. And I think this is something that Russia is concerned about as well, is that it may be a preemptive strike. Now, that's pretty much going to conclude the news for now. But if you are interested, I said I made a promise that I would bring out a map to talk to you guys about safe zones uh, inside the United States and where I think would be uh, if you're living there, because, you know, unlike uh, President Obama, uh, you know, Putin cares for his people and has, you know, built all kinds of places for them to be able to get away from nuclear strikes. But in, in most cases in America, there are not all these huge places that can accommodate millions of people. So I did some research here and I looked long and hard till I found a good map. This map here was put together by FEMA. Uh, it was put out in, I think it was 2013 showing what they believe would be Russia's first strike areas. Most of these are military targets, uh, but I wanted to zoom in on these and kind of go over the entire United States with you in different areas there that I think would be uh, little safe zones that you might want to consider yourself uh, if you are in any of these areas here to kind of be a little bit more safer from these types of threats that, that would happen there. All right, guys, let's take a look at the map right here. You can, if you can see the little dot here out here in the Gulf of Mexico, looking at Florida, it looks like pretty much the only really safe place in Florida is once you get way down here in the south, south of Naples there, because you wouldn't have a nuclear strike there. Of course, you do have to be concerned about radio contamination. And one thing that I think about is if you, when you think about contamination, you know, the currents of air always move from the west to the east. So that makes it dangerous just pretty much anywhere. But going up in here into, uh, say, North Florida uh, or the Central Florida here, 
all along the coastline here in, in what they call the Big Bend area, uh, but staying away from Tallahassee. Tallahassee is not a safe zone, okay? Tallahassee is not a safe zone. But in the Big Bend area here, uh, all these areas in here, looks like the battery on the laser is kind of breaking loose, so we'll use a, use a pencil here. All along this area right here in the Big Bend, that would be a little bit of a safe zone there because they don't seem to be having strikes there. Even down into here, you don't want to get too close to Panama City though, there, that is a dangerous area, military bases there as well as military bases all along the Gulf Coast area of uh, Northwest Florida there. Uh, I think residents in Northwest Florida need to get just above the state line in Alabama here. Actually, there's a place called Greenville. Greenville, uh, Alabama, and even Castleberry, I'm from Castleberry, Alabama, right up in here, is another safe zone. All these black dots are military bases. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, those are military installations that are dangerous, period. Uh, kind of moving out a little bit and uh, moving up to Georgia and Alabama. If you look down here, down here in southern Georgia here, Tipton is in this area, a lot of places like that. Those are pretty safe. That's a good area to be in. I'd stay away from the east coast of Georgia. Same thing with South Carolina, uh, not really a whole lot of good places around South Carolina, period. And of course, once you get up around, around Atlanta, it's all dangerous, period. But so pretty much in southern, um, the southern areas of, uh, of, of Georgia there would be your safe zones there. And even in Alabama to the west there, near the Alabama-Mississippi line there looks pretty good. Um, and, and the same, when you get into Mississippi, ooh, wow, everything is pretty, you got pretty much in the center of the state where you got a lot of woods, uh, would probably be a good safe area there as well. And, uh, and you know, again, guys, you know, I'm looking at this from a survival aspect, uh, and, and I don't mean this to be fear-mongering, I just think it's good to be, you know, prepared, be cautious. Um, it looks like on North Carolina, though, that pretty much the eastern coast here of North Carolina seems to be more safe. It's around Raleigh and areas like that that are not good. Uh, and then, of course, if you were to get maybe, if you're in North Carolina up here in the far northern, northwest corner there where you kind of uh, touch in there to Virginia and stuff, that would be a, a, a safe area for, for those areas there. Then Kentucky... Uh, Tennessee seems to be a hot spot pretty much everywhere around Tennessee. So if I were in Tennessee or around Knoxville area, anything like that, I would probably go as close to the border or cross into, you know, into southeastern Kentucky, uh, seeming to be one of the safer places there. Before we get into the north, though, let's kind of move more over here to the, uh, to the uh, west here. Uh, again, Jacksonville, Mississippi, pretty much anywhere right up in here. Uh, to the to the to the east of the Mississippi River may be a safe area. Uh, Louisiana again, southern Louisiana. I wouldn't be anywhere in the south of Louisiana. I would go to the far northern area of Louisiana, maybe in there, uh, just there. Uh, Arkansas. All of the southern Arkansas looks like to be a fairly good safe area, even for wind currents. Uh, you have a lot of target areas, but they're not nuclear target areas. But it looks like you'd be a little bit safer, especially in the bottom left-hand corner of, uh, of Arkansas. And then uh, you go on into Texas. Texas is definitely not a good place to be, especially as far as the um, east part of Texas. Any of the large cities, Houston, Dallas, all of those, Austin, all these, all these, all the capitals are targeted from what we can see here. But excuse me, as far as West Texas, what you're getting on out into the desert regions, that's a very good safe area all through the West and, and down closer to Mexico. Uh, but you do have a, a big area right in here. And I'm not sure of what city that is up in that area part of Texas there that's safe. Uh, you get in the more northern part of Texas here up to close to the panhandle of Texas. You've got some good safe blocks, areas like that. Um, and then going into, once you get into New Mexico, pretty much all of New Mexico's uh, midsection here, staying away from Santa Fe and stuff, and there it seems to be a good safe place to be. Again, up in the top part of the panhandle of Texas and where Oklahoma comes across the top, 
That panhandle of Oklahoma, very good safe spot. You don't have too much nuclear strikes to your west, so therefore you're not dealing with a lot of radiation currents and things like that. And, and I'm not saying that once you start letting nuclear bombs go and stuff, guys, it's not going to be good, period. We realize that. That's just terrible for environment and everything, especially when we get to California and we see all the nuclear targets are all over the Southern California area. I mean, of course, you're still going to be dealing with radiation that travels in that direction. It's just what we're trying to do is help people to realize, uh, like even West Kansas seems to be a very good safe area in West Kansas area. Uh, there you get into Colorado. I would say anywhere up into the mountains of Colorado, get away from Denver, Colorado, go deep into the mountains there. Good safe areas in Southern Colorado as well. Uh, and if I lived in Arizona, I'd go up to the northern area. I'd stay away from uh, Las Vegas and stuff. I'd get up to here to the northeast part of Arizona. Uh, and then, of course, you get into Utah, uh, down there near the south southern section there of Utah. And anything in Nevada, I would be as far to the, to the uh, northeast of Nevada as I could, or, or maybe, maybe even more central north part of Nevada would be safe up in here because again, you don't have anything coming across. Most of the attacks would be towards San Francisco area anyway. And Oregon seems to be one of your safest states you could possibly live in as well. Uh, because again, they only seem to have one target here in Oregon, uh, not counting the northern part of Oregon. So, but that would give you a nice clear area where you would not have so much radiation and stuff. So Oregon's a safe place in that area. But once you get up to Washington and places like that, you, there becomes a lot of targets in that area. Uh, you get over here into the, into the other states here throughout. You got Montana. Uh, Montana's only got one nuclear target, but all these black dots are not good. I would be in the, I'd be like one friend of mine that's way up here to the northwest of Montana. Uh, be a good place there. Of course, the northeast as well. And then, of course, we got South Dakota. Amazingly, South Dakota, pretty much anywhere to the west side is safe there. No targets at all. And again, you don't have too much targets for radiation traveling there. Uh, we're looking also into Iowa and, and, and places up in this area here, especially in the northern parts of the states, closer to the Great Lakes area. Uh, it would be a good place to be. You, uh, you know, you get into Minnesota there, I would say, try to stay more down here to the far west of Minnesota or either up there closer to the Canadian border. Uh, and then Iowa, again, Iowa, you got a lot of targets in Iowa, so I would try to cross over into Minnesota, get away from some of those areas there. And then when you get into Illinois, again, I would go up there, I would get up closer to the, uh, what they call the Yukonan Peninsula there. Uh, which is also what you have with um, uh, getting up in that area there because you'll be closer to Canada and away from all the, the bad stuff there. You don't have too much that would be traveling in that direction there. Uh, but once you get into the eastern part of the coast here, my gosh, this is where it all gets bad. I mean, even from Virginia, West Virginia, northwards, uh, it's just everything is bad. Uh, it seems, you know, you get into Pennsylvania, the northern Pennsylvania you can get to the center, the better off you would be. Um, anywhere on the eastern seaboard is just a disaster. Uh, even if you were uh, in these areas here, so much radiation would travel over, just would not be safe to be anywhere in those areas there. Uh, I would definitely look at trying to get out of there. Of course, if you get all the way up there to the very top there, um, when you get up there to... Uh, the New England states there, all the way up there near Canada is the best place you could possibly be at. Uh, you look at upstate New York, the very, very closest Canada as you possibly could get. Uh, if the Canadians would let you in, I'd go to Canada and get away from that as well. So that's what it's looking like there, guys. I just wanted to kind of give you a little idea of this. Uh, and I will uh, load this video separately as well. Uh, is part of the broadcast we just did here. So we will load this separately and just put, put title it something like safe zones, uh, doing the best you can trying to, to deal with a possible nuclear strike. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.